So I want to welcome you to the Surefire Life Conference platform, the platform that the Almighty God has given us to make simple, clear, and available the pathway to eternal life. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. There is no argument about that. You may believe it or not. You may like it or you don't like it. But one day will come where everyone will submit at the feet of Jesus to his judgment. Heavenly Father, we thank you for a day like this. We thank you for this privilege and for this opportunity to come before you to hear your word. The Bible says that the word of God is pure, converting the heart, making wise the simple. Lord God Almighty, we pray that your word will enlighten our eyes. Your word will make us wise. You will reveal the deep and secret things of your word to us right now as we listen to your word. We ask that you come and teach us, Almighty God, according to that word of faith that I have just mentioned in Psalm 19, verses 7 and 8. Lord, we ask that you make our hearts pure by your word. You will give us a testimony of the word and transform our lives. I ask, Father God, that in this month, as we continue to listen to this word, the blessing set, let us all, by your spirit, receive the understanding, the victory by your word, and be able to manifest that glorious, victorious life that you have given to us already. Thank you, our Father and our God. Glory be to your holy name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Beloved brothers and sisters, and everyone who is connected on this platform, we started a teaching series last uh, week, which we titled The Blessing Set of the Birth, the Death, the Resurrection, and Ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. The blessing set of the birth, the death, the resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I want to say very categorically that there are guaranteed blessings for everyone who is in Christ Jesus. These blessings are what I call the blessing set of the birth the death, the resurrection, and ascension of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We want to continue with the teaching of that topic today. Uh, for the sake of those who may not have joined last Sunday, and I do employ everyone who is joining, please stay through, because this program is meant for you. It will surely bless you. Uh, for the sake of those who didn't connect, we made very simple what a set is. A set is a collection of things that go together. So if you have one, if you have the set, you have everything inside that set. We use a jewelry set for women for our illustration uh, that a set of jewelry that a woman may buy uh, may have a set of uh, necklace, bangle, and uh, earrings. And if you have bought that one set, for that one set that the person has bought, the person has all. But let me challenge you that while you may have all the necklace, the earrings, the bangles that are in that set, one may choose to use only earrings. That's your choice. And that's exactly how many Christians have lived. Many Christians have come to Jesus Christ and they have received victory over sin. And that's where they stopped. And they forget that the same victory that God has obtained, uh, Jesus has obtained for them, God has given them over sin, that same victory God has given them over sickness, God has given them over the devil, God has given them over a whole lot of things that they need to learn and exercise their faith. So that is what we are here for. The objective is for you to understand, for us to understand this blessing set and live a victorious life while here on earth because God wants us to be victorious. 
So we gave a list of five of them. We are going to take 10. Again, I said, I don't know how long this is going to take us, but I'm not going to be in a hurry because this is the crux of the matter. How to live victoriously as a Christian. It comes by you understanding the quote behind the blessing set and being able to apply that quote appropriately. I have told you my own testimony that I came to understand since February 20, uh, 2008 that healing is the children's bread and that God Almighty has already provided healing for me. In fact, beyond healing, that God has given me eternal life and that eternal life comes with this set of blessings that I am talking about here. And from that day till today, I have not had to take any treatment for sickness of any sort, of any kind. Of course, I have nothing against treatment. I have nothing against hospital. They are trying their bit, what they can do. Of course, coronavirus has exposed uh, everybody. Yeah. In fact, if you, ca you can Google it and check. The past president of America, Obama, he said that COVID-19 pandemic has taught us a lesson that those whom we thought knew what to do don't know what to do. <laughs> so you can take that and go and Google it and see it for yourself. Yeah, so they are trying their best, but my God, my Father says, I am the Lord that healeth thee. And since that time I came to understand that and I received the code, I have lived by that code. And God has been faithful and is faithful. He will be faithful to you today in the name of Jesus. So we run through the five lists. We said number one blessing in that blessing set is the blessing of the forgiveness of sin. The forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power and nature of sin. Number two, deliverance, the blessing of deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan and all his works and all his agents. Ah, is that not the people you have been afraid of? Meanwhile, God has delivered you and has given you dominion on top of that. Number three, the blessing of the Holy Spirit with his gifts, which is the power of God, and his fruits, his fruits, which is the righteousness of God. Number four, the blessing of healing that I have just talked about, the blessing of healings. And number five, the blessing of sonship, sonship. You have become a son. You have become a daughter of God. These are the five we are going to be looking at uh, before we take the next five. So today we are going to start with number one, the forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power and nature of sin. Ah, are you still one of those who is weeping every day? God, forgive me my sins. Are you one of those that your past is still hunting you? Are you one of those that they are telling you, oh, because of what happened, what they did, that, 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 that is why you cannot progress. I have come to announce to you that the lie of the devil ceases to operate and function in your life today in the mighty name of Jesus. The Spirit of God give you wisdom, give you knowledge, give you understanding today of the blessing that Jesus Christ has obtained for you already by forgiving you your sins and delivering you from the power of sin and the nature of sin. Let's look at the scripture to establish this truth as we walk through. Isaiah chapter 53. Last week we read quite a lot of scriptures. Um, so listen to the video of last week so you can connect with those scriptures because we have to move on. Isaiah chapter 53. We will read from verse 4 uh, to the end. I read, Surely he has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we esteemed him stricken, smitten by God and afflicted. Verse 5. 
but he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes, we are healed. I am reading from the New King James Version. Verse 6. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Listen to that. This was the prophecy of Isaiah many, many, many years before Jesus Christ was born. And he said in that verse 6, that last part, he said, And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Verse 7, He was oppressed and he was afflicted. Yet he opened not his mouth. He was led as a lamb to the slaughter. And as a sheep before its shearers is silent, so he opened not his mouth. Verse 8, and he was taken from prison and from judgment. And who will declare his generation? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgressions of my people. He was stricken. Let's pause there. Can you just imagine, picture the record? in the synoptic gospel of all that Jesus Christ went through and see how precisely Isaiah prophesied about the life and meaning and purpose and fulfillment of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. To God be all glory, who has blessed us with this great blessing. Hallelujah. Verse 9. And they made his grave with the wicked. Imagine that. But with the rich at his death, because he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth. Ah, and you remember he was crucified between two criminals. And yet, when he died, Joseph Arimathea, a rich man, was the one who took care of his burial. Hallelujah. Precisely, all came to pass. Verse 10. Yet it pleased the Lord to bruise him. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, that's God made his son Jesus Christ an offering for sin for you and I to be free. Hallelujah. And that's why I say the lie of the devil, whatever has been haunting your life, will end today as you hear this word of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Because God Almighty made his son an offering, offering. He gave him, he did it for you and I to be free. So how dare the devil accuse you? How dare sin have dominion over your life? Who be sin? who be devil, to speak in our Nanja English. Oh, glory be to God. I'll repeat that verse 10 again. Yet, it pleased the Lord, that's the almighty God, to bruise him, Jesus Christ. He has put him to grief. When you make his soul an offering for sin, he shall see his seed, he shall prolong his days. He shall see his seed, that is Jesus, shall see his seed. He shall prolong his days. Hallelujah. And the pleasure of the Lord shall prosper in his hand. He shall see the labor of his soul and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant shall justify many. For he shall bear their iniquities. Who bears your iniquity? Jesus Christ. I read verse 12. Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great. And he shall divide the spoil with the strong. <laughs> because he poured out his soul unto death. And he was numbered with the transgressors. And he bore the sin of many. And made intercession for the transgressors. 
who is making intercession for the transgressor, Jesus Christ, who has made, who has borne the sin of many, Jesus Christ. Praise the name of the Lord God Almighty forever. Hallelujah. So, brothers and sisters, let us look deeper then to this blessing, this great blessing of forgiveness of sins and deliverance from the power of sin and the nature of sin. Let me start by reminding us that that title means sanctification. When your sins are forgiven and you are delivered from the power and nature of sin, you have become a sanctified soul. And that is indeed what Jesus does. He sanctifies perfectly all those who come to him. Hallelujah. So, forgiveness of sin. You could see it all through the scripture. The almighty God has always intended to forgive mankind because he knows what man is made of. Sin in itself is the transgression of the law. So we can understand it simply. Sin is the transgression of the law. Don't forget this. And you can see that in 1 John chapter 3, verse 4. But let me make it abundantly clear that it is the law of God we are talking about, not the law of man. When the law of man conflicts with the law of God, we are to do the law of God. So sin, therefore, is the transgression of the law of God. So you can see now why God, through his son Jesus Christ, has declared you and I free from all sins. Let's follow through so we come to that. Hallelujah. Thank you, our God. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. God has always intended to forgive man, forgive humankind sin. You would see this in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21. In the case of Adam and Eve, when they sinned against God, what did God do? God, the Bible says there in Genesis chapter 3, verse 21, also for Adam and his wife, the Lord God made tunics of skin and clothed them. God covered their nakedness. In Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, if we come to the time of the law, God gave the children of Israel the law and gave them the blood of bulls, of goats, of sheep to be used for atonement for their sins. So in Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, just to pick one scripture, you can read it. The Old Testament, what the real Old Testament means. Again, let me give us something there to remember. Every time we talk about Old Testament, many people think it is the Old Testament Bible, you know? No, that's not what Old Testament means. Old Testament refers to that law, that covenant that God made with uh, the Israelites uh, through the, that they will use the blood of bulls under Moses. The blood of bulls, goats, used blood to atone for sins. And there were a number of legal requirements thereof. That's what Old Testament means. Not the Old Testament Bible. But there is a section in that Bible that addresses all that aspect. So let's know that and know that clearly. Uh, another day, I think I've said this before, we will have time to look at the dispensation of God's revelation to humankind, where we will address that. So in uh, Leviticus chapter 17, verse 11, the Bible says, For the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls. For it is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. It is the blood that makes atonement for the soul. So God gave this to show that he has always intended to forgive 
mankind his sins because man is weak and subject to failing God and God made a way. And that way is Jesus Christ who has declared, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except by me. Let's look at Isaiah chapter 1 verse 18. He says, come let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. God says, come, I will forgive. No matter what your sin is like, I will forgive. Oh, take an example in the man called Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul the apostle. He was speaking. And testifying of how God forgave him. How God, by his grace, changed his life. He said that he was a sinner. Chief among sinners. He said he was not even worthy to be called an apostle. He said that he persecuted the church of Jesus Christ. He said, by the grace of God, I am who I am. First Corinthians chapter 15, I believe verses 9 and 10, and all the way down, you will see that. Yea, the same Saul of Tarsus, who breathed threats against the church of Jesus Christ, when he met the Lord Jesus, he was transformed. His life was changed by the grace of God. And he became Paul, the apostle of Jesus Christ. That will be the portion of my hearer this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. So the Bible there says, Come, let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. So how deep, how reddish, how dark are your sins? God said, come, I will forgive. That's who our God is. He forgives. We've looked quickly at uh, the testimony of Saul of Tarsus, who became Paul, the apostle. Let's look at David. Let's look at David. So you understand this blessing. David in Psalm 103, 11 to 14. He said, for as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is the mercy toward those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those who fear him. For he knows our friend. He remembers that we are dust. This is why God is doing this. David, having this understanding, knew the code of this blessing. And see what David is saying in Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. Psalm 32, verses 1 and 2. This is the Psalm of David declaring. He said, blessed is he whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. It's not that the person didn't have iniquity or did not commit iniquity. He said, but God chooses and say, I am not imputing iniquity unto this person. <laughs> Glory be to God. That's what God has done through Jesus Christ for you and me. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. And in whose spirit there is no deceit. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. God demonstrated this in the life of the children of Israel. You remember in Numbers chapter 23 verse 21, you can check it out. When the children of Israel were coming, you remember the story of Balaam and Balak, where Balaam was now hired to curse the children of Israel. And he said, I have received a commandment to bless. That's verse 20. And he went to verse 21 and he said there, he said, I have seen no iniquity in Jacob. <laughs> no iniquity. So sin is the transgression of the law. 
And God, through his son, Jesus Christ, has decided that you who have come to Christ, I who have come to Christ, number one, all your sins are forgiven. He, God, has decided not to remember any sin, any iniquity, any transgression, and has declared you and I blessed. And so the Bible says, blessed is the man. Blessed is the woman. Blessed is the person whose transgression is forgiven, whose sin is covered. Blessed is the man to whom the Lord does not impute iniquity. That's your state when you have come to Jesus Christ. The Lord does not impute iniquity against you. We see in the book of Hebrews, we cannot fail to read Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 9, Hebrews chapter 10 teaches a lot, but because of time, I will just go straight to Hebrews chapter 10 and just look at a few things there and then we will summarize. Hebrews chapter 10. If we start from verse 4 to 10, he said, For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. So that old practice of the Old Testament that was covering sin, it's not possible that it could take away sin. Five, therefore, when he came into the world, he said, who came into the world? Jesus Christ. He said, sacrifice and offering you did not desire, but a body you have prepared for me. Remember what Isaiah prophesied. He said he has given him as an offering for sin. So he prepared a body to be offered for your sin and my sin, for your transgressions and my transgressions, for your iniquities and my iniquities. And God has made it that whoever comes to Jesus, he declares his blessing upon that person and says, I impute no iniquity unto you. No iniquity. We read on, verse 5. He said, but a body you have prepared for me, in burnt offerings and sacrifices for sin, you had no pleasure. Then I said, behold, I have come. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. Who is the me here? Jesus Christ. To do your will, O God. And what is his will that he has come to do? That will is to deliver you and I, you and me, from the power of sin, from the nature of sin, from the spirit of sin, and to completely, totally, cleanse us from sin and to restore us to the relationship with God and the place of sonship in God, as we will see as we proceed in this study. He says, to do your will, O God. And you remember at Gethsemane, when the pains and pangs of death came upon Jesus, and he said, Father, if it is your will. He says, I wish that this cup should pass away from me. But for this purpose I have come. Oh, let your will, let your will, your will be done. He knew the will of God, that the will of God was for him to be the offering for sin, the sacrifice and offering for sin. Because a body he has prepared to take that. No more the blood of bulls and goats. No more uh, the burning of rams and sheep. But the body of Jesus Christ. In verse 8 to 10, he said, previously saying, sacrifice and offering, bond offerings, and offerings for sin you did not desire, nor had pleasure in them, which are offered according to the law. Then he said, behold, I have come to do your will, O God. He takes away the first, that he may establish the second. So the first is the Old Testament the old covenant by the blood of bulls and goats and rams. And he established the second, which is by the blood of Jesus. Verse 10, which is the last verse we'll read here. He said, by that will we have been sanctified. Remember the word I told us at first. Sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus. We have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ. Once for all. Once for all. So by that one sacrifice, Jesus has sanctified you, has sanctified me. Beloved brothers and sisters, Christ was once offered. 
to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. That is Hebrews chapter 9, verse 28. So how do we enjoy this blessing? How then do we enjoy this blessing? Number one is simple. Confess your sins to God and repent of all sins and forsake them. You see this in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses 17 through 20. You know the scripture very well. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17 says, If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And then he continues and continues. In John chapter 8, verses 34 to 36, John chapter 8, verse 34 to 36, there you see in verse 36 specifically, the Bible says, if the Son makes you free, you are free indeed. So, you are free if you have come to Jesus and you have confessed your sins. Repent from that sin. Exercise faith over every sin that makes you feel like you don't have the power. The power of the Spirit of God has been given to you once you have come to Jesus Christ. And the nature of sin has been broken and destroyed over your life. Because the body of Jesus Christ has been given as an offering, as a sacrifice for sin on your behalf. Sin shall have no dominion over you. Sin has no power over you, over me, over us. If you have come to Jesus Christ and have taken this number one step and have confessed your sins to God and repent of all your sins and have forsaken them, God has forgiven you. Oh, sometimes all sins keep coming to hunt many. All sins, the devil tries to throw it back and make you feel guilty. You know what you do? Feel free to keep confessing before your father, but never you confess it as a guilty party. Because some people will keep out of ignorance, still feel that, oh, there is something they are owing. If you want to get that Example, I encourage you to go back to study the life of Paul, the apostle. He was forgiven and he became the apostle of Jesus Christ. And so when the devil throws all sin at you, throws the past at you to make you feel guilty, never you feel guilty, but feel free to confess before your father. Feel free to tell your father, oh, father, thank you. In fact, let me tell you exactly how you pray that prayer. You say, Father, I thank you for forgiving me that sin. Mention the sin. Mention it. I thank you for you have forgiven me through Jesus Christ. And you again repeat, I repent of it. I forsake it forever in my life. And never you go back to that sin. That is the victory. Hallelujah. Number two, you must forgive all others their own sins. Oh, we always pray according to Matthew chapter 6, verses 9 to 13. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we stop at verse 13. We never read 14 and 15. Please read 14 and 15. And I will read it. 14 and 15 says, For if you forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Hear 15 and mark this down and read it for yourself. But if you do not forgive men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. Hmm. I know this is a hard one. Because some people will say, Ah, somebody who has done evil against me. Beloved brothers and sisters, the life you have received in Christ is that you must forgive all. Ah, a sister will ask and say, how about the devil that is oppressing me? I will teach you on the devil in a different dimension. There are ways of dealing with the devil. That's another thing. But you, when as far as it is a human being, forgive. You know, the human being who is oppressing you is oppressing you because of who is in him and who is behind him. And that's the person behind him that you must deal with. Remember when Jesus Christ was telling the disciple how he will go to the cross and die. 
Peter rebuked him and said, ah, that cannot happen to you. And Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. Hallelujah. Because he knew who was behind that admonition from Peter. So look beyond the individual. See the devil behind the evil man and you will know how to deal with the evil man. Hallelujah. So you must forgive all others. In Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 and 22, you remember the same Peter came to Jesus Christ. He said, how many times should my brother offend me? How many times should my brother offend me? And Jesus Christ said to him, in fact, he asked, he said, is it seven times? Let's read that scripture. Then Peter came to him, that's verse 21, and said, Lord, how often shall my brother sin against me? And I forgive him. Up to seven times, Jesus said to him, I do not say to you up to seven times, but up to 70 times seven. 70 times seven. Because... This is what that Matthew chapter 6 verses 14 and 15 was teaching us. You see, when somebody commits evil against you and you hold grudges against that person, you are actually limiting God acting and fighting and working on your behalf. And so when somebody does evil against you, God says forgive. When you forgive, your father in heaven will forgive you your own trespasses. And then he will take over the battle. Hallelujah. And like I said, next Sunday, we are talking about the blessing number two. Deliverance from the power of Satan, the power of darkness and dominion over Satan, all his evil works and all his evil agents. That's what we're going to be addressing next Sunday. Sunday. So the last point that I want to make, number three, enjoy your freedom, but sin not. Enjoy your freedom. The freedom, you are free. Christ has set you free. As we said, we read there in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17, Christ has set you free, but enjoy your freedom without sin. And this is very critical. And this links to the topic of next Sunday. Deliverance from the power of darkness and dominion over Satan and all his evil works and all his evil agents. This is one key thing you must know, people of God. You see, when even people who have come to Jesus Christ, they still think, having received this freedom, they think sin is something that somebody should monitor you. Your pastor has not seen you. Oh, your wife has not seen you fornicating. They don't realize that sin is controlled by the devil. The devil is behind every sin. A man who is fornicating is ruled by the spirit of fornication. I will want to read this one for us. Because this is our last point. I want us to turn our Bibles or open our Bibles to the book of John, John chapter 8. I want us to look at 39 to 44. And I hope you note this scripture so you can read them again for yourself. John chapter 8 verses 39 through 44. Look at it. He said, they answered and said to him, Abraham is our father. Jesus said to them, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. These were the Jews. Jesus Christ was speaking to the Jews. And the Jews, they claimed, they said, Abraham is our father. So there is no doubt. Some, of, some people will say, I have come to Jesus Christ. I've given my life to Jesus. I am a child of God. That is true. Some people will say, oh, God created all mankind. Therefore, we are children of God. That is true. But what makes you really a child of God is whether you have come to Jesus and have received this freedom from the power of sin and the nature of sin. So the Jews here claim, they say, we are Abraham's children. Here, verse 40, what Jesus continued to say, 
He said, okay, from that verse 39, he said, if you were Abraham's children, you would do the works of Abraham. 40, but now you seek to kill me, a man who has told you the truth, which I heard from God. Abraham did not do this. 41, he says, you do the deeds of your father. Then they said to him, we were not born of fornication. We have one father, God. 42, Jesus said to them, if God were your father, you would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God, nor have I come of myself, but he sent me. 43, why do you not understand my speech? Because you are not able to listen to my word. 44, the last word. He said, you are of your father, the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning and does not stand in the truth because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources for he is a liar and the father of it. And that's why you see in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that all liars who have their part in the second death. So those who think they are enjoying lives. You don't know the spirit of the devil has possessed you. And that's why you're lying. The men that go about jumping from one bed to the other. And some are even uh, claiming to be Christians. They say they are enjoying themselves. They don't know the spirit of fornication has overtaken them. Let me show you one more before we close. Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. So you understand what the problem is when we are talking about sin. It's not because sin has power. It's not because the devil has power. It's not because God cannot forgive sin. God has forgiven you your sins completely, totally through Jesus Christ. This is where the problem lies. Whether you understand that the devil is the one who administers sin. And so when people are walking in sin, they make themselves subject to the manipulation of the devil, which is what we're going to treat next week. And that's why Jesus has given us the power to cast out the devil. So his manipulation will stop. Look at Ephesians chapter 2, verses 1 and 2. It says, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. The spirit, what did you read there? What did you see there? It says, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now walks in the sons of disobedience. Every sin is masterminded by demons, the spirit of the devil. That's why that young man, that young woman that cannot stay without fornication, it is the devil, the demons that are pushing you. And so you need to come to Jesus and repent and surrender your life to Jesus and also receive the prayer of deliverance from the power of that fornication. Of course, once you have given your life to Jesus, and your prayed for that spirit will flee from you already immediately. Lastly, 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. 1 John chapter 3, verse 8. Write it down for yourself. You will see there. It says, whoever sin is of the devil. Whoever commits sin is of the devil. He said, but for this purpose, the Son of God was made manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Let us close with this. Back to our Isaiah chapter 53. He was wounded. Our Isaiah chapter 53 verse 5. He was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him. And by his stripes we are healed. Jesus fulfilled all this. Jesus paid the price. And you have seen it all through the scripture. Brothers and sisters, the power of sin has been destroyed. 
The nature of sin has been destroyed. God Almighty has forgiven you all your sins. All my sins. Don't walk with your heads down and be afflicted by the guilt of that sin anymore. Come up from amongst them, says the word of God. And be ye separate and touch not the unclean thing. God says, I will be your God and I will be your father. Let us pray here as we bring this teaching to a close. I decree over you that every power of Satan, every power of the spirit of sin that has been operating in your life, right now be broken, be destroyed in the name of Jesus. Receive your deliverance Amen. from the devil, from all his works, from all the pressures of sin in the name of Jesus. The blood of Jesus sanctify you, wash Amen. you, make you clean, make you whole. And the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, fuel you now and guide your life and give you the power of God to live and the fruit of the Spirit, the righteousness of God to live holy unto God. Receive the blessing, the full blessing of God in the name of Jesus Christ. Finally, you see when you know that you stand justified before God, then you can pray and pray effectively. So I will just ask you to read Hebrews chapter 10, verses 16 to 23 for yourself. And also that Hebrews chapter 10, verse uh, 28. And declare that unto yourself as often as you can. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 28. It says, so Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. Receive the blessing of the Lord and prosper in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.